Hello again. Today I'd like to talk about graphic notation and graphic scores, or at least my use of them in some of my pieces. Most of my pieces are written using standard notation, which has been the norm for the last 600 years or so. However, in the 20th century, as composers started using more noise sounds and eventually electronics in their music, new ways of notating these sounds were developed. My introduction to graphic scores uh, was from the Humber College Libraries. They had a number of scores there and books on graphic notation, which I studied. And then I started to try to write pieces of my own. Graphic notation comes in several forms and is used for different reasons. It symbolizes music in one of two ways, either as a representation of the sounds produced or as a guide to the actions to be performed to make the music. As far as I can tell, the main functional reasons for using graphic notation are, one, as a shorthand uh, to quickly jot something down, two, to represent an accompanying part, like a part on tape, three, to represent actions that are being performed, four, as a guide to improvisation, five, to facilitate chance, and six, when standard notation just won't do and you have to make something up. I suppose seven, as an extension, would be when music is written to be just a piece of visual art itself. But I'm going to talk about the first six. Graphic notation evolved in the 1950s and is sometimes used in conjunction with standard notation. Graphic notation uses visual symbols to represent musical sounds or actions that are outside the realm of standard notation. My first graphic score was for a college composition project called Fear of Drowning. The piece was scored for tape recorders and improvised synthesizer tracks and had some backwards tracks. The melody was played on a hairdryer. So I studied the graphic notation I saw in Humber College. Uh, and this was my first attempt. A couple of months later, I uh, was fooling around with my synthesizers and I came up with a keyboard improvisation and I quickly jotted down some squiggles on a piece of paper which became the graphic score for that improvisation. And then after I had recorded the piece, then I went back and I wrote out, properly drew the score out, although it's not very accurate, it's an early attempt and I should probably someday redo this piece. The score as it is is more of a piece of artwork than a really functional musical score. Later that year I did a piece for four basses, an electroacoustic work called A Vision from Athos. And the score there was an action score. It showed you what to do, but it didn't tell you the notes to play. Uh, the piece was to be formed. Uh, the bass players pluck the strings between the tuning peg and the nut, and you get a high ping-like sound. And so the score shows you what strings to pluck, but it doesn't have anything to do with what notes eventually are going to be played. So every performance is going to be different, depending on what kind of basses you use for the piece. I also wrote a couple of piano pieces that year, uh, which became part of a short collection called Three Etudes for Piano. And the first piece is somewhat graphic-ish. You hold down a bunch of notes and then you hit other notes and you hear the overtones on the piano strings come out. But the third piece um, is a graphic score. It's a type of cell animation and there's a whole bunch of different actions, or I guess what they now call gestures, little musical motifs and ideas, and you play one, then you go on to the next one, you go to the next one, you go to the next one. The piece is supposed to be followed 
uh, you know, spiral, but you don't necessarily have to play it that way. You can jump around and play one sound and another, and the sounds are to be improvised somewhat. So again, every performance is going to be somewhat different. I did attempt a couple of uh, picture-oriented graphic pieces. One was called uh, Variations on a Jackson Pollock Painting. It just had random little dots and squiggles. I had thought of actually basing it on paintings by Jackson Pollock. But I, I never got around to doing that piece. And another piece called Circle Squares and Triangles, which had different shapes and the circles, you would do a, a particular thing in a loop over and over and over. In a square, you would stop and change. In a triangle, you would do the opposite of some, what somebody else was doing. I never finished that piece either. I wanted to get a bunch of people playing it to see what would happen and then fix the piece, but that never happened. The first big piece that I wrote after I graduated Humber College was a piece for orchestra that was commissioned by one of the members of the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. The score was written in standard notation, but there were certain elements of the piece that used graphic notation, uh, particularly in the piano and the string parts, which couldn't easily be written any other way. I used different forms of notation in the 90s for a couple of different pieces. One was uh, a, a huge thing I wrote in 1990 that took forever to write called Transitory Systems Number One. I wrote out the score and I had all sorts of problems with the score. So many problems with what I wanted to, wanted to be done on symbols that I eventually came up with a new notational system for doing specific things on symbols which led me to write my solo, uh, my sonata for solo cymbal uh, in 1994, which uses a graphic notation that shows the actions to be performed. It doesn't tell you what the sounds are. Now, if you know what the actions, what sounds you, I mean, if you study cymbals, and by looking at it, you, you do know more or less what kind of sounds you're going to get. But the actual pitches and timbres, again, are going to be different from performance to performance from one symbol to another. And it was right around that time that I was working on another symbol piece called Alliteration. And it got sketched out. And I do have a recording of it, but, but, but it's really just a draft. I think the score is going to have to be tightened. I don't know, there's a few quirks about the notation I have to fix up on this piece. One picture type graphic notation piece that I did was for Buck Moore. He had um, a concert going on in the late 90s, I think it was, uh, called the Evil Deerhead Project. And uh, he had a piece that had all sorts of noise sounds. So I copied out the sounds with um, graphic notation so I could follow along and I eventually improvised a viola part over top of that when we played it live. More recently, I've used a couple of different kinds of graphic notation for various pieces. Some of them are improvisational. You sketch something out and then you play it, but it's roughly sketched out or you don't get precise notation. 
show little squiggles, and then you have to follow the squiggles as you play. And I have a number of pieces like that. There's one for a recorder quartet. Well, there's a look at some of my earlier works. Join me in part two, and we'll take a look at some of my more recent ones.